Hey everybody, welcome back to Digital Sticks Covered. Appreciate you showing up. We're going to have a good time tonight. We are going to talk about bipods, bipods, and more bipods. We're going to talk about cheap bipods. We're going to talk about expensive bipods. And I got a uh, special guest here. So we got we got the X Ring. Hey everybody, welcome back to Digital Sticks Covered. Appreciate we got somebody playing music. We got the professional amateur, better known as Bald and Curious. How you doing, Val? What's up? And we have a special, super special guest, <laughs> the man, the myth, Matt. How you doing, Matt? Is this your first live chat, buddy? Very first, Rick. Very, yeah. very first. All right. All right. Well, let's get started here. All right. So, everybody, appreciate you showing up. It's always fun to have some extra knowledge on the uh, chat here. We've got lots of great shooters. And uh, we'll find out a little bit about what's going on, what you guys are using what you wish you had, what you wish you could afford. <laughs> and uh, we got some uh, cheap bipods today. I bought a couple at the gun show today. Very cheap, but uh, I kind of like them. I kind of like them, so we'll uh, talk about them. But first off, uh, Val, what kind of bipod do you got going today? Uh, nothing special. I got the, the Mackel. It actually came out of my uh, RPR which is really, really budget uh, bipod, but it actually does what I needed to do for my basic bench press shooting. So I'm actually felt pretty happy with it. And uh, my little 17 HMR has got this, this fairly inexpensive, but a little more money than, uh, than a Mac for uh, a Harris bipod. And this one, that's pretty nifty, works fine for uh, what I needed to do. Lift but, it up a little higher so we can see it. You see it right here? There we go. Now compare versus, versus the Mac hole. The Mac um, was really, really a budget bipod, but you know, it's got a nice feature. You know, it's got the, 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 the tail and whatnot. Uh, supposedly, you can replace the feed with, with whatever works for the Atlas bipod, works for that as well. So, limited use I, I, I need it for and limited experience I have with the work of the time. All right, very cool. Uh, Matt, how about you? What I you Oh, we got Donut Man on top there. He wants him to take a hold on. We'll get to you later, Donuts. I, I'm eating. I'm enjoying. X Donuts. All right, Mr. Matt. What bike um, are you using on your uh, your latest and greatest? Well, as of right now, nothing at the moment, but. I have a lot of experience with the Harris bipod and a little bit, pretty fair amount actually with the Atlas. Those are the two that mainly kind of get ran back to back. Very nice. All right, we got one of those pop-up questions tonight, guys. For those of you that may not know, today I am drinking, because I went to Sam's Club and I didn't have my fix, but we got the IY6CT, and if you look at that, that's an S A H, sweet as something. So, if you guys could guess what kind of drink this is, you win nothing, but you're smarter than the average joke. All right, there's the bottle. All right, yeah, here's this, my drink. All right, what do you got going on? That looks like a water and ice, right? Well, I'm pretty sure that's water and ice for sure. Yep, that's it. What a nice night's nice weekend. I'm I'm having a few extra calories. Oh, that's right. It's the weekend. Yeah. I only I only consumed about maybe five six hundred calories today so far, so I can afford to have a drink or two. All right. How you doing out the bunny park? DW George is in the house. Doug B forty five auto Chico Wise. Keith Gregory, Gear Bear. Idaho Rogers, how you doing? Peak. There's a word in front of that peak, though, Idaho Rogers. What is it? All right. So, Mr. Extreme, um, I know you've had a chance to try it a lot. I know you tried out the Atlas. I know you tried out the uh, Thunder Beast. I know you tried out, what was the last one you did recently? It was a Warren. Warren, okay. And then I have one here. Uh, Harris bipods here. 
Yeah, that's one of mine there. That one, uh, that was one of the first ones that came out with a um, arms mount on it. And so that one was nice because most of your Harris's have the thing for the sling swivel stud. And yeah. so I, I started, I kind of cut my teeth on the Harris. That's all there was at the time. Uh, this one is probably older than Matt. <laughs> but uh, yeah, probably. And this one was actually on a work gun from a long, long time ago. And so I have a lot of Harris bipods. I give them away now uh, for the most part oh, because sweet. I don't use them anymore. Cool. Appreciate it. I'm not giving you that one, though. <laughs> That's no, good. But, um, but that one Harris you have, does it have cant? No, these don't. They do not. The yeah. one that you have should have cant on this, it. This one does. I was asking yes. because the one I have is similar to the one you have. And it sucks not having cant. It's yeah, if you show a close up of that one, I everyone can kind of see how that arms mount was machined on there. That was a that I've had that bipod a long time. All right, hold on. Let me figure out what I'm doing. That's always a plus. And first off, let me apologize because I'm not going to be able to respond to any comments because I don't have the ability to open up two windows here at the house. Otherwise, you'll lose, uh, I'll lose my service. So saying hate everyone, but I can't answer back. All right, so let me put it in here. Give you guys the full details. So this is the arm lever, right? There Correct. I'll try to not move too much. There's a little bit of rust on here, but it's been around a while. A uh, long time. You this one? <laughs> uh, probably close to 10 years. That was before you had a quick attach on a Harris. If you show that profile right there, you can kind of see how the machines, were, the sides were kind of cut down to fit in that cradle. Yeah. Well, what's but, cool about it is right so, there. That's all we had back in the day. <laughs> see where it says USA on it? That's always yep. a <clears throat> Now, I will say I really enjoy this style over the other styles I'm going to show later. Uh, I think this is the way to go on so, And you know you can pull that out so that when it hits the chassis, you can you know, readjust. Kind of like that. Yep. So definitely not bipod. All right, let me go back to uh, switching back to every bone question for you x string is that the one that has the pan that does not have the pan feature in it does it no none of the harris's that i'm aware of have pan uh, mm. that has the tilt or the cant as you call it uh, but about four years ago I, I guess three and a half four years ago i switched over to atlas and i really never looked back and when i say that i mean guys i have a lot of atlas bipods okay bipods are critical for any you know doing anything where you're getting into position where you really want to either be on your belly or configure it on a rock or something like that and i'm a huge fan of the atlas now the original one that i had the first one is a bt10 and the 10 the legs roll okay and so there was a requirement that was put out from the military when they were fielding these that they didn't want the feet to roll so they came up with the BT-46. I actually reviewed it. And on these, they don't roll. They don't twist or anything like that. And that's important because if, you, if you're shooting on a hard surface, as you're pushing, because you should be leaning into the bipod, you should be preloading it, these can actually roll on you and it'll start walking away from you. And so, I mean, they're still great bipods, but... I prefer not to have rolling feet any longer. Uh, my guys over at Thunder Beast, if you guys watch the channel, uh, you know they sent me one of theirs. And this is an awesome bipod. I actually ran this at Bushnell. And it's a really, really nice setup. It is wider, though, so I did have some issues getting this into my Eberly stock pack. Matt, you know, because you've ran Bushnell yeah. before. You know, almost everybody's running some type of Eberly stock or some some type of um, weapons carrying pack. And because of that width, it was really hard to get it into the pack. So I was having to take this off in order to insert my rifle into the scabbard. And I know Tim Davis is on the uh, channel tonight. He just emailed me earlier and he actually got this set up. Matt's very familiar with this setup, but uh, Area 419 which they do a lot of precision rifle stuff, they've come up with a setup where you can put this on, on top of the Atlas, just remove the existing screws that are already in the ADM mount, 
and you can go with an Arca Swiss mount. So if you've got an Arca Swiss rail on the bottom of your rifle, like an MDT or one of the Area 419s, you can do that. And additionally, you can put a barricade and integrate it in it. The only thing I've ran into with this barricade, and Matt, I don't know if you're aware of this, when you run the barricade stop on this, if you're running your legs rearward, you still have your 90, your 135, but you can't get into that 180 forwards. No, I did not know that. Real quick now, if you extend the leg a little bit, it will. But if you don't extend it, it doesn't. It bottoms out. I don't know if you guys can see that. Huh. Did not so, re really cool setup. So that's actually one. I bought a knockoff of the Atlas. So yesterday I purchased a real one <laughs> online. And then uh, we were at the gun, <laughs> the gun show, and I'm like, I can't turn down this deal. It's only 60 bucks. So, and I don't know how good it is. I haven't tried it out yet. I've been messing with it all day, but I haven't officially tried it out. But this is uh, this is the knockoff. So we saw a lot of fake Microtech knives, and I'll put it in the other camera here in a second. At the uh, show, there was a lot of real Microtech knives. And you know that the fake ones are never as good as the real ones. But it was 60 bucks, guys. And I want this is some of the topics I wanted to talk about. This is the old one. Like, the, what's a BT-10, right? The yeah, turns? Yes. Okay, so it, it is that. The one I ordered is not, you know, it's a real one. And I did not get the one that turns. But uh, Ray had a chance to take a look at this. and uh, First oh. off, let me say I do not support knockoffs or clones. I don't either. Uh, and I, <laughs> I bought one. Because I want to do a, I want to do a review of both. So yeah, cool. um, I will tell you the Atlas definitely pursues anyone that goes that does their, you know, because this is a patented system that they have to be able to go forwards, you know, to zero to one eighty, and it hurts it hurts the companies that put the research and design into this for this. I hate to say it, this crap that comes out of China, yep. um, and somebody buys it not knowing or they think it's a, a it's a deal. Uh, but it's it's crap. It, it, that's exactly what it is. And if you look at the machining on the details, it is horrid. I mean, I don't even know if you'd qualify that as pot metal. <laughs> it's well, this one was fairly good. It was the other one. Well, no, no, I saw that one. But I'm looking at if you look at the joints on that, yeah, where it interlocks, it's horrible. And it's let me go ahead and answer this real quick because the guys asked twice about a 50 BMG. The Atlases are rated for 50 BMG, just so you know. I know you're going to have to spend some money on it. Uh, I also think that the Thunder Beast is rated for 50 BMG as well, uh, but I don't. I can't say as to anyone else. And someone asked about the Magpul that Val's got. Yeah, I've seen those, and the price for those is over 100 and something bucks, right, Val? Well, you remember? No, how it's, no, it's under 100 bucks. You can find on Amazon for 95 bucks. 95 so. Yeah, oh, they they they're fairly cheap. I mean, considering what you're getting, that you know, it's swivel, it, it it rotates and the turning legs and whatnot for basic things. I I think it's a good, it's a good deal. And as far as the 50 BMG, I don't know what I'm I'm looking I'm looking right now. All right, blah 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 blah. blah. I'm looking at the specs. Yeah, so this one is definitely knockoff, and hopefully. Uh, Alice is watching. They can go after that company right there. I don't know if you can read it. I think it was A and G or something like that. Yes, A N G. But I, the reason for buying it was just to because uh, we got a I got a real one coming, so I kind of wanted to see, you know, do one of those torture tests on it or something. So we'll see. We'll find out. But it's a, uh, it's an extra bipod, you know. If someone needs one at the range, it's there. It's now, I don't know if you guys know about this, but Atlas was not started uh, as a company to supply bipods or anything to civilians. It was actually designed for the military, and it just happened to be that they made it available. Um, I actually spoke with the owner of the company, and this was for a deficit in bipod availability for weapon systems, and that's how the BT. Uh, the Atlas bipods came about. Um, I like it. It does have some shortcomings as far as speed, but it really wasn't one of those where it's made for competition where you've got to deploy the legs faster than anyone else. 
Uh, but you know, there are some things once you get used to it, you can get faster, but it's not the fastest thing out there. It's hard to beat a Harris. Harris is fast. Yeah. Well, the reason why I bought the next one that I'm going to show is it as actually kind of on the platform of the Harris. It is bigger and beefier for the most part. I don't know if it's stronger because I haven't tested them out yet, but I like the function of just clean, you know, and they're down. Yeah. Hitting the button and then go over to the other one, hitting the button. So now on this one, because the Harris is completely opposite. So if I hit the button, it shoots out, right? This one's the opposite. You pull the leg down and you hit the button and it retracts. So I kind of like, I kind of want to see that. I want to practice doing some prone stuff on the ground trying to set up <laughs> and see if I enjoy that better or not. Now, can you show me, Ray, the, uh, or maybe you know by looking at it, what, what's this probably a copy of? Let me go to the better camera. I have no idea what the thing's a copy of. He, he just, he shit, guys, he's showing you one that's another knockoff of something. And it's, yeah, it's a $60. It's even worse than the other one. No, I think this one's better, honestly. I like this one better. <laughs> so it's got a, Basically, it opens up like a Harris bipod. I need to bring this up. I'll tell you something that I saw on the design of that. I would never recommend that for a cheap bipod because of the way that the legs lock out. Uh, what's going to happen is that piece of metal is going to shear and you're going to lose that position. This one? Nope. Down where your th uh, Go further where your thumb was located. There yeah. you go. Right there where you put your thumb on that lever. No, your right, your other hand. Oh, here? Yeah. The way that indexes, you can actually see it visually. It hits on that little rim. Pull the foot out, please, sir. There you go. So you'll see it kind of comes in in a 90 degree, but because that's cheap metal, that's going to shear. Oh, you're talking about where the thing where yep. the holds it. Yep. I don't know. It's pretty strong. I beat it up earlier. Yeah, it's not going to do it right now. As you deploy it, though, it's going to get wear on those surfaces. And yeah. then that's where it locks on that 90 degree. That's going to end up slipping. Look how much. Look at the difference in these things. Do any of y'all have experience with the Warren Skyline bipod? Yeah, I reviewed one, Matt. Oh, you did? Okay. I did. Which I've been told that can no longer, that had to be modified because they used the system pretty much. It was a different mechanism as far as how you deployed it because you pulled down on it to change it. But this five position system is patented by Atlas and they pursue all the companies that do that. So I think that was actually pulled. The one that I reviewed, there was only, if I'm not mistaken, I think there was only 10 prototypes that were put out. And that's what I reviewed on the channel. Okay. Yeah, Atlas came after them, right? That's what you're saying. Uh, I don't know that for a fact, but I know they pursue anyone that goes that does their system like this. Yeah, and this one is identical. I mean, probably not identical, but it looks like it's it's cheating basically. It's a copy. This should be going to jail. Yeah, the problem is it's so hard to stop it. It, it really is. And it's a huge problem in the United States Yeah, for a lot of great companies. And if you don't believe that, just ask Trijicon, just ask Microtech, ask Atlas. Um, you know, these guys, they don't know. They see a Trijicon for a deal. Next thing they know, they send it in for warranty, and it's not even a real one. Uh, bald and curious, you and I agree on that 100%. I do not own anything UTG. Uh, I'm not saying anything bad about them. I just don't own anything from them. I've just never seen a product that sparked my interest from them. I always had a feeling the UTG were just knockoffs of other other things, and they you can feel they're cheaply made. They're just cheaply made. I was like, I was I was so surprised when I saw them at the chat show. Like, what the hell they these guys are doing here? I, I never never really never really got you know even like like the metal is not the greatest uh, bipod. It's, it's fairly inexpensive. It's got all the features when you grab that thing and it's, it's, it's really well made. You know, it's like it's, it's metal and all that. It's not like, like all the UTG stuff. Everything I ever held was like airsoft quality. 
Oh, that's my opinion. What do I know? All right, Ray, what's the price point market of that one you just showed us? That was. Well, you just bought one. What did you pay? I paid. What was it? Should about three ish. Forty nine, I think, something like that. Now I know a lot of you guys are gonna say so three fourteen. Yeah, I know a lot of you guys are gonna say three hundred and fourteen dollars. I actually had some people comment three hundred and fourteen dollars. My rifle costs that much. This is probably not the bifop pod for you then. Um, this is for hard use. You're not gonna have to. Ha you're not gonna have to buy another bipod. Now this is not without its problems. Uh, when you're trying to get this to tighten up on the bottom of the Atlas, this little turn wheel, sometimes it's really hard to get the purchase on it to adjust the resistance that you're getting on it. But when I shot Bushnell, uh, the owner, the guy that invented the Sky Bipod, and it's spelled C-Y-K-E, uh, he was actually on my squad. His bipods start at $500 and they go up to $1,000. Woo. They cannot keep those in stock. They've already sold 3,000 of those units, and he just sold that to MDT, uh, which is a Canadian company. So you can actually purchase that one through MDT directly, or I think he also sells them at 406 Bullets uh, because he was the inventor of it. Um, you can get into to bipods that are crazy. Now, the difference is, is those extend out. He's got some that extend out to three feet long uh, from a standard length bipod almost, and it does some really unique things. Uh, where it'll actually pan on the gun this way. It'll go 180 degrees. Um, so you have basically unlimited pan. And you can lock it out. I was just reading on that, Ray. And um, 170 degrees of pan, left or right. Oh, yeah. The can. It's insane. It's insane. And what you have to realize, and, and this is a topic that I do want to touch on, because you were talking about the Harris, how you can press that button and it deploy, it retracts the feet. Well, <clears throat> no, not on the Harris, it shoots it out. Okay, what was the one that you had that retracted it up? This is called the Lion Bears Incorporated Scout Pod <laughs> Series. <clears throat> so... It's, so you pull it out to your distance that you want, and then it comes in like that. Okay, so in my opinion, that's the stupidest thing ever, okay? So the thing is, is when you get on position, and you're probably going to get into position with your – give me just a moment to get this set up. You're probably going to get into position if you already know that you're going to be shooting from a prone position. So – I was shooting out of a sniper's hide, and when I got in the hide, I had very little clearance, but there was a big pocket here on the left side. So as soon as I put my rifle in, it tilted over, okay? So what you're trying to do is get that leg extended, and so you want something that you can just reach down and fill into that hole. You see, see what happened there? It just yeah. dropped down and went into the hole, so now it'll take that up. You know, with the Atlas, you can do something very similar to it, if you're behind the gun, now remember, this hand is on the gun back here. All I've got to do is reach up and just put it where I want to in the hole. Tilt or your cant will help you a little bit, but it's only going to be able to do so much if it's like this. Yeah. And there's a lot of times, you know, Matt knows this. Uh, he shot a championship match with me, and we had to work off of those rocks. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. And those were completely unlevel, and so you're sitting there trying to get it out as much as you can, and we actually had legs that were forwards like this and one that was like backwards so you could get into those. So being able to get that quickly is good. I don't care about retracting it quickly. I'm not trying to exfil, you know, quickly. And if that's the case, you're just going to pick it up and run. I don't need it to suck up. Well, see, but what I've noticed, too, on when I had the Harris bipod when we were shooting at a VOD was it was like you had to kind of sit there and try to find the right one. Correct. Or, where this one, you just basically drag it, you bring it to where you want, yep. and then you're done. So I was thinking I kind of like this style, possibly. Yep. I don't know. That's why I want to mess with it. So I'm going to do some, uh, try them out, see what I like. This thing is built. Now, it's ugly, and it's got a lot of imperfections in it. And, of course, it's made in China and all that. Guys, that thing is cast. What you can't see 
is how badly it was cast because the resolution doesn't pick it up, but it was horrible. Oh, you can watch this. Let me go over here. I don't know. I, I'm kind of liking it. But uh, yeah, it's definitely not any quality of. You can see that maybe. See how there's some imperfections look at that. down here. And then down, see that little mark right there? But it's, I don't know, it'll be fun to try out. And it's, uh, it was, you know, just a test. Find it, see how it works. Something to review on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, someone asked about this half round here. Guys, this is called a barricade stop. So there's a lot of times you'll be on a barricade on a position. And so let's say this is a wall and I'm up against it and I'll have my chassis up on the top. This allows me to pan like this because I'm not using the bipod itself. This is just a barricade stop. And that's why they have the teeth in it so that it won't slip. And then you can rotate around for whatever targets because typically you're going to have a, a big array of targets. So that's what that is. It's a barricade stop. So we got some good questions here. Let's see. Did the Atlas bipod that you just bought have a mount for three four? Yeah, it had. It had basically uh, a quick detach for a Picatinny nineteen thirteen rail. And then uh, another question was. No, yeah, you guys, like Daniels. You guys run bubble. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> do you guys run bubble mount levels on your scope? You guys are running the. Uh, what the heck are those called? Send it level. What's it called? The LRA send it. Yeah, the send it. There you go. I was actually looking yeah, at I those don't... online. <laughs> Uh, let me grab one in case he doesn't know or uh, hasn't seen one on the channel. All right. Yeah, Buddy D, it's basically electronic instead of a bubble. They have one version with the bubble in it and one without. And uh, I think it's 189 is what the price was. But you can, it has a gauge of like a, five different lights or a certain amount of lights, and it'll tell you if you're off a certain amount of degrees and you can. You can make okay. it more touchy. Okay, so so doing all this precision stuff, it's all about speed. Okay, if I can save two seconds off Matt, we shoot the same time, and I save two seconds in setup, then I'm going to beat him on that stage. And Val, you know how it is. It doesn't take a lot to add up when you're talking about five or six stages throughout the day. So when you're talking about long distance shots, just remember that at a thousand yards, one degree of cant in your rifle is going to move your bullet about five to six inches. Somewhere in there is a good rule of thumb. OK, of course, that's going to be caliber dependent and everything else. But that's a good rule of thumb. One degree of cant is about five to six inches. So this is an LRA send it. The reason I don't like bubble levels is I have to change my focus from in the scope looking downrange range. And now I have to basically refocus to something that's on the gun or on the scope, and I've got to look at it. Guys, I don't have to look at this. This is powering up right now, and it's just done its check. You don't look at it. You, as you're looking through the scope, if your eye is open, you'll see the green when it comes on when you hit level. Okay. Now, my hand's not going to be as steady as a rifle, but that's green. Uh, this is set to two-tenths of a degree. Very finite. Okay, so I've got blue, single blue, going to green, and then red. But you got to remember, it's a lot more stable on a rifle. I don't use it this way. You can do it horizontally. But the problem is, if you put this on a 1913 rail, now you got something poking in your back if you've got it on a sling, or it's not going to fit in your bag properly. So you can mount these vertically on a spur mount, and it will still work the exact same way. So what we're going to do is I'm going to tilt right. It's red. I'm coming back towards completely level again, which is green. Boom. And then now I have blue. So this is mounted just to the left of my scope. So with my support eye, basically, I'm going to see the LEDs and don't even have to focus on it. These do run about $250. I think they make a cheaper one now because in case you weren't checking your battery, it does have an actual spirit level in there. Uh, it does give you a battery. Like when I turn it on right now, 
however many dots you see is how much battery I've got. So I've got four out of five. I changed this battery last year. Here you go, Val. I'll give you this question. If I can find it. Oh, right here. Boom. This is, I, you know, I was actually going to address this. Mm, hold on. I, I'll let you guys answer this first if you like, but uh, I see this so many times in a match with newer shooters, um, and we'll, we'll go from there. I have no clue what the right thing is. I mount mine, so it's, it, 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 it tilts forward because it's easier for me to just drop them or the other way. And plus, when it's, when it's mounted, it legs forward. The, the actual control, the buttons will not grab the legs are facing me as well. You know, and the same goes for the for the for the buttons to lock it back. So mine's mounted forward. And there's a good reason for that. Because <laughs> so this one's this one's ready to go. And then here's the here's where you can tighten stuff down. Normally it's this direction, which is this is the front of the gun over here. You have no choice with the hair. Well, you, but you want to load the bipod. So if you Actually, you do have a choice with the Harris, and that's the problem. If you load it in, I'll see guys get the a bipod, Caldwell would, or a hair. If you load if you it, load it, 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 it collapse it on itself. Yeah. It'll yeah. Very good. So that Joaquin, you want to make it so when you're pushing into the gun, it doesn't fold. Yeah, because you should be loading that bipod pretty hard. Uh, when I'm on an Atlas, whoa, whoa. as robust as these are, what's that? This is a family show. <laughs> oh, when I'm at full extension on an Atlas, I, you'll actually see the legs flex, okay? Uh, I'm actually flexing them right now, but if I'm loading that bipod, you're going to see that you're going to see that flex happen, and I think that's where those clones are going to start failing is when you're really loading something pretty hard, I have a feeling one of those will just fold up on you. Yeah, I want to try it. I want to try it. We've got uh, Jason Elliott out there. How you doing? Thanks for showing up. Buddy D. Don't miss any new ones. Oh, Adamus is out there. How you doing? DW, tree guy. If I missed you, type something in there and I'll say your name. So here's that Thunder Beast, and this is the one I was using at the match. And so when I had the <clears throat> when I had the legs out, now this does have a wider stance because it has this. Uh, I don't know if you would call it a yoke or whatever, but if you look at it, uh, where the leg placement is, I've got this side here completely in line. You'll see I've got about another inch of width there. That's going to give me a little more stability this way. But when I needed to get into that hole that was off of this side, I just pressed the button, and as soon as it hit the bottom, it stopped. And so I had it stable here because I've only got so much cant that I can put in on the top. Nice. All right. So let me flip this back. So there's a lot of us that are weekend warrior guys that just want to go out and have fun. And, uh, but we do want something stable. We don't want to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So between like Caldwell, you got a uh, Harris, you know, um, you got a uh, Magpul is what Val's got and some other ones. What, what are you thinking as far as uh, best things for the buck, right? Now, I know Caldwell makes a carbon fiber one, but if you're going to be the weekend warrior guy, maybe you don't want carbon fiber. Maybe you do. But like this built like a brick shit house one for 60 bucks may be perfect for somebody, right? Or no. I mean, maybe they only shoot 10 times a year, you know, but if you shoot every four times a week, I mean... Probably hey Val, not. yep. Does that Magpul have forty-five degrees? No, it's only ninety. That's it. Okay, that's it. It's only it's only ninety degrees. You know, but it does it, it does can't and it does swivel. Okay, so this is a key thing, and I think Matt will agree. <clears throat> and this is answering your question, Rick. If you're just the guy that's going to be shooting off the bench, or you're shooting prone off your belly and you have no intention of doing any type of you know competitive match or anything like that then i believe you know the utg 
And there he goes. And there he goes. I hate that. <laughs> Broke the internet. He, yeah. he he needs to spend less money on the guns and more money to get better internet. You know, he would have the best internet if he could, but he, he uh, just where he lives, there's just shit. It's crap. The sticks. Yeah. I mean, even where I'm at, I have crappy internet. Yeah, but come on. If, if, he, if he sells a few guns, he can probably buy his own satellite. Yeah, more than likely. <laughs> Armament and Axe is out there. RTT Guns and Gear. If you guys aren't familiar with those two channels, definitely check them out. Good guys. Hey, not, not to mention he's probably smart enough to build his own and launch his own satellite. Yeah. Let's see. I, I just got Netflix. Yeah. So I had to take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was I was wondering if somebody right, made it home, man. Yes. Are, yeah, they so, did. Uh, start over with your hand. Uh, as soon as mother came in, she turned So, so if you're going with the sub dollar bipod, I think you'll be fine. If all you're doing is or bench shooting. Or real Pierce, can you explain why? Why would you need 45 forwards or rearwards? Uh, shooting over a ledge, um, angles, down slope. Yes, there you go. Or you need to make the bipod lower. Okay. There are times where you can't. This. You're getting Netflix, buddy. Really? You're getting Netflixed. Oh, <laughs> he gone. Don't go kill nobody now. Rick, have you heard of Tier 1? I've heard of Tier 1. I have not seen. Uh, they're pretty good looking bipods, but they're kind of up there. Price of the Atlas probably floating around the price of the Thunder Beast as well. Carbon fiber design in the legs. Okay. A few other little goodies. I just didn't know if you heard of them or whatnot. Yeah, I have heard of them, but I haven't had a chance to play with any of them. I need to Bipod. They got Matt out there telling me how to spell, I think. I need a dash in there. Whatever. <laughs> I went to I went to a bad school. I'm glad I just made it out of there alive. Actually, let's see the BT10 LW17 V8 Atlas 360 degree adjustable precision bipod. The Wish bipod. See, and that's the one. I bought the BT46 or 47. It's the non-rotating uh, legs, which is huge because the ones that I've used Ray's because he has his normal one, and then that BT10 is. Is kind of uh, let his buddy borrow it while we're at the range for the day, kind of deal. And I did notice that the they do want to roll. So or, well, I've seen you shooting off of the bench at Ray's with the, the legs that roll, and you, you can see it kind of walking forward little by little as you're loading the bipod. Yeah, yeah, and that's kind of a uh, the one thing I'm not sure of. And once I get the real one, looks like Ray's. Oh, here it comes again. He's back. He's back. Woohoo! I'm back. <laughs> there you are. Now I'm, now I'm sitting on your head. <laughs> All right. So real quick, um, if this is on your rifle, you'll actually have the legs forward like this. So my hand is actually level here, and that will get the whole platform lower. The other thing is high angle fire. I can now press straight, and my muzzle is pointed this way. Whereas it's really going to flex badly on this position here if I'm shooting at a steep angle. Or you can run it rearwards. Um, that's one of the benefits of the Arca Swiss. I know Tim Davis had just gotten this Arca Swiss, uh, one like this from Area 419. And what's up, Todd? How are you doing? Uh, what's nice about this, especially with the chassis that have this built in it, you can slide it forwards or rearwards on the chassis uh, for certain angles and everything. This the Swiss Arca Swiss does make it nice. Yeah, I was looking at some of that stuff. I did a lot of like play shopping in my head last night, and all the stuff I want. And well, shooting I off of a fifty-five gallon drum at VIR, 
that Arcus Twitch would have been ideal for that position. Yep. Yeah, they'll give you a short little platform to shoot off of. And so if you have one that's fixed and it's towards the end of your rifle, now you've got this big floating chicken wing here that you're trying to brace off of. What you can do with that Arca Swiss is just loosen it, bring the tripod right up here, and then now you have a solid platform that big that you can actually just shoot the rifle off of. Makes a big difference. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I want to do a lot of training. I'd like to do a lot of training with some uh, actual tripods too. I know you got real nice ones. That's something I want to learn to practice on. That'll be down the road, obviously, but but uh, there's a lot of practice that has to go into just shooting with a bipod or a tripod, I should say, as well. Yeah. Let's see. What about a monopod for a mil spec stock? Let me see. Yeah. What about a monopod for a mil spec stock? Can't find them. You talking about in the back or in the front? Oh, speaking, this, this is a great topic. You know the monopod that you run off the rear of the stock that just kind of yeah. deploys down its little leg about the stall? I hate those. I've never used – I've used one and actually sold it as soon as I got it. I hate those. They're horrible for what we well, do. I hate to I hate to disagree. I got one for my RPR, and I literally found it in a gun store for like 25 bucks. It yeah. runs the rear of the Picatinny rail of my, of my RPR. Yeah, and for, for the bench press shooting, it's freaking awesome because you, just hold it, you hold it and it 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 you know it it you twist it and it goes up and down. It's, it's got a button to make it really long. No, 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 it doesn't have a button. It it screws in and out. Okay, yeah, they have one that's got a button, so you can slip the whole screw and just extend it. So if you needed a lot of angle, you can go to it. I hate a rear monopod. I will never run one. So can you Pierce. deploy it like the Harris? You just pull on a tab and pull straight down. Yeah, on the bottom of the Magpul PRS stocks, do you remember oh, they had yeah. that little piece that slid yeah. off and there was a Picatinny? Yep. Yeah. It's that a leg. Way. It's yeah. a leg that's about that long, okay? And yeah. so you get it and you deploy it down. You push a button and you can extend it. And it's meant for you to have it on the front bipod and you can adjust the rear up or down. Well, I remember yeah. the older ones, you could uh, you had to screw them left or right to adjust your height on it yeah, Correct. Exactly. That's, what, yeah. that's what mine is it, it there's no screw you just go like this and it goes up and down so basically it works like a squeeze bag mm -hmm. i you can know? see it good for a bench guy but yeah you see what you see how yeah, long it's, it's taking to make it yeah, long too slow, too slow that, that, that right there ain't nobody got time for that i'm talking I'm, I, I specifically said i love it while i'm doing bench rest shooting yeah, I mean, yeah. There's no argument about the about the man. Uh, no, yeah. I'm just messing with you, Val. Come on, and guys, Val and I know each other. It's not like I've never met him before. Here's mine. <laughs> Mine's a little different looking. <laughs> That's your monopod. <laughs> That's my monopod. Yeah. Well, one, one good thing about this and and combination with the with the backpole, like the way the rifle sits on the bench, you need a big ass back in the, in, in in the back. So this and this. It's really good combo for the bench. Obviously, yeah. like you said, in a match and whatnot, it it, it, it sucks. And this this would be nice if it had at least like that's my like a biggest gripe. This only has a 90 degrees, it should have a 45. If it had a 45 watt, it would be for the money probably the best pipe out there. I agree. That's one of the downfalls of that. They can't though. No, they can do a 45. You, you can have a 45. Just like the Thunder Beast, uh, it has the quick deploy, but you can't do the full five position like the Atlas. Yeah, and so what I can do it. is there's a button on the backside and I can press it. Now I'm locked at 45. Won't move anywhere. So question for you, uh, X-Ring. When you ran that bipod at Bushnell, did you ever have to run it at the 45? And because you had to go to the 90, did you see yourself taking up any more time? To get it to that 45 other than like the atlas at that match i never had to go to 45 with it so it was it was fine but okay. you know from other matches that we've shot there are times where that happens but on this bushnell match if i needed it at all because there were some stages where you weren't allowed to have a bipod you had to actually take it off the rifle okay uh, which was oh yeah uh, there were some stages where no bipods no bags were allowed ouch <laughs> 
you had to run what you brung, and uh, they would allow a sling. So there were some exceptions to this one. This this match was a little unique, but this isn't about Bushnell. It's about bipods. Uh, I did see Todd uh, with the Elfsters. He, he agreed about the monopod. It has its place. It really does. But for the stuff that I'm doing, I'm not a fan of them. And I do like your hat as well, Val. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll piss a few people. Ray got a new hat, you guys. Go check oh, it yeah. Out. Check it out. Well, I'm, I'm, I'll be I'll be looking for mine in the mail. <clears throat> uh, these cost me a fortune. There's 10,000 threads in that and the American flag on the back. Uh, I haven't decided to start selling them yet because <laughs> yeah. in order for me to sell them, I would have to sell them for $30. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, it cost me a lot, but uh, there's no, there's no, and it's a Richardson cap, so there's no quality lacking in it. I'll show them the ways, hopefully. Well, I never, I never, never, never paid for one. You have to give me one, but I've seen it. See, I'm kicking around doing a live reloading series for the continued. Click on here. Six, five grand old PSA AR series. By the way, gang, so far, I'm pretty big fan of the six, five grand old. Thoughts on the six, five grand Does it say we're talking about six, five grand old on there? Hell, I'm kidding. We're talking bipod. So if you had a 6.5 Grindel, what bipod? <laughs> I like the 6.5 Grindel, and I will be building up one shortly. Uh, I know the Sniper's Unknown does not have a restriction on the secondary shooter from having to shoot a 5.56 or a 308. So I'm going to recommend if I shoot that one with Bryson, if he's able to do it, or if I shoot it with Matt, whoever I'm shooting with, um, that the secondary, because I'll shoot primary, uh, I will recommend that person shoot a 6.5 Grendel. It's a great cartridge. Do they let you shoot off a cane? You can shoot off a cane, your leg, your backpack, anything you want. And uh, 45 Auto, a lot of people are running, you know, socks with different stuff in it, rice, popcorn, sand. Popcorn's yeah. good. You know what works good, too, is the Airsoft BBs. You can fill it up full of those. Those work pretty decent. They don't really lock up real tight, though. They're kind of slippery. Some options there. Chico says well, he's actually looking for a bipod because he's doing the 1,000 yeah. yard in April. Yeah, he's you know, him and uh, all the boys will be out shooting at that range. I don't remember the name of the range. But. Yeah, so if you're a pilot and you got a wooden leg, you can shoot off the wooden pack. You can shoot off your wooden leg. And if you're a pirate, you can have the parrot actually pull the trigger when you get it all spin. Team, team no, the, no, the parrot, the parrot will be a spotter. <laughs> yeah, it'd be like this. Forgot! <laughs> you missed it! <laughs> you suck. You suck. You suck. You suck. Keep doing that. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, yeah. Elfter's got the gas gun, three point six five round. Monopod would be good for a fixed position if you weren't going to move around. Chico yeah. wise, twenty four inch gong at a thousand yards, you will have no issues. You do a blindfolded. Monk, KB thirty two, he can shoot the fucking thousand yards, old board. Hey, Les. Yeah, I was still waiting on that bet, Val. <laughs> thousand uh, yard cold bore on a golf oh matter of fact oh here we go i actually finally got them you want to see my balls okay so this was from bushnell and i actually made inner impacts on both i think uh bryson and i we were one of like six teams that actually cleaned the golf balls how far uh, like, like rick said before this is a family show we do not need to see a <laughs> and, oh, i that? need to answer todd yes yeah, you missed I the got, beginning. I still have a lot of Harris's. I got one. I one of good there. And he's got another one of mine. This is the collection. Yeah. This is the one I've been using, so I finally had to buy a bipod. Unfortunately. Cheap ammo Chinese. Dirt Road's in the house. What's up, Dirt Road? Dang. Not drinking the bottle. I have not heard that name in a long time. How are you doing, Dirt Road? No. Dirt Rhodes, he's been resurrected. You missed, you suck. 
by a box. There wasn't no miss. I don't think he saw the other ball. Hold on. There you go. <laughs> is that better? Or is that better? <laughs> <laughs> there, that looks cool, actually. <laughs> Here, hold on. Keep on that. Oh. You should, you, oh, should hang them around, you should hang them around your neck. Wait, the big sign. These are my that, now I'm like a now I'm like a chameleon. <laughs> <laughs> What's with the chicken foot logo? <laughs> <laughs> You're a funny guy. Uh, that is a very very rare Microtech patch. I've been offered big money for that thing. They don't. Th this is like 20 years old. We'll have to get that tomorrow, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not getting it from the house. What company makes a bipod for a pick rail? For a pick hey, speaking rail. of speaking of chameleon, here's my daughter's chameleon just hanging. It's <laughs> nice. Hanging. That kind of looked like Ray. So for the Picatinny rail. Um, a lot of your your all your atlases you can do a mount like that. That Harris has one. Uh, all of those knockoffs that Rick purchased at the gun show will go on a pick rail or nineteen thirteen. Yep. Everything mine. The uh, there is a big difference when you do buy an atlas, right? So you go to Office Planet or whatever, and if you want just one that's you got to use the screws in order to get it into the Picatinny rail. You know, you're saving like, 80, I think it's like 80 bucks or 100 bucks. But it's going to take a while to take off every time. So I don't, I'd rather have it just be able to click it on and off. If you know what I'm saying, Mario Mechanic is in the house. Yeah, I think, Rick, the, the one with the two flathead screws run about like 218 bucks or something 220 ish yeah i actually have one of those the atlas mm -hmm. where it just uses a flathead screwdriver uh mm -hmm. it was going to be too much of a pain to take it off that's why i yeah. didn't bring it over to the table because <laughs> it kind of just stays there yeah. yeah well this is a good setup i mean on the real one but it, it's nice because it's got that little extra safety button on it so it won't open up and fall off while you're running it because I know yours has one of those, Gary. Right? Yeah, uh, uh, Todd's got a good question. I'll let you guys all go first. It's a must. Here it is right here. Consistency. So what is everyone's thoughts on loading a bipod? I believe you should at all times unless you're shooting from some weird position where you can't. I have heard, oh, I've been watching some videos on when you're running a tripod, um, you don't load, you don't load the tripod like you do a bipod. Um, you know, you still put pressure on the shoulder, but you're not, not as aggressively or, uh, I don't know. Give me your thoughts on that. Uh, I second what Rick said. Um, any position where you are using that bipod, it, it needs to be loaded if you can if you're not using the bipod then obviously you're not going to be loading it so definitely load the bipod but i just want to make this clear we're talking about the bipod needs to be loaded not the shooter yes okay right. <laughs> yeah i firmly believe in loading the bipod i do it any chance i have the opportunity to load it um and you are right on a tripod that is a different technique i'm not going to say it's a true free recoil that you're using uh it really depends on the tripod you have as well because if you end up having a flimsy tripod uh, you start leaning into that you're going to collapse a leg and you're going to have a rifle on the ground and everything else so it is a def definitely a different technique uh, especially if you're you've got one fully extended and you're six feet up in the air trying to shoot over something so yeah Load the bipod, Todd. That's what we're all going with. Well, that's the thing, too, about having your feet flat on the ground. If you're laying prone, I noticed I like almost like pushed my feet to get a little more. Now, yeah. I never shot off the, off the tripod, right? But I was messing with, with when I was in the shot show, a couple of companies had a tripod set up over there, and I was messing with them. And... I had a feeling it's it's actually a lot harder shooting off the tripod than just shooting prone with the bipod. It right? is. 
<laughs> it is. <laughs> But there are some techniques you can use. I did not post the video. Um, you know what? Y'all go ahead and talk for a minute. I'll set something up. I know this is a bipod, but it's kind of related to legs and everything else. Yeah, and so good. I'll be right back. This will be good. Right. Legs. <laughs> okay. Anybody wants to buy a bunch of 40 freaking uh, uh, bullets? <laughs> I quit shooting. I quit shooting oh. limited, and I got a bunch of, I got a, I got a crap ton of freaking uh, forty bullets. And I know one more YouTuber, famous YouTuber, that has a shit ton of freaking forties as well. Nicky Marshall. That guy only shoots his mouth. Uh, it's doing better, Joaquin. I appreciate that. I have, to, I have to make another video because the people are still commenting on that. I had a guy commenting the other day that he watched it, and what did I really prove? Because he said it was nearly as fast, not just as fast. So I, my, my reply was, dude, if something takes almost twice as long, then it's not nearly or just as fast. It's a, <laughs> floor, a lot slower. Yeah, some people you know. Uh, I want to do a little quick hello to the F-18M223. Thanks for showing up. Conservative sniper owner. How you doing, my friend? And uh, Mario as well. And Joaquin. Oh, and Michigan Watch. How you doing? How much for the 40 bullets? Oh, is it just projectiles? No. Forty short and weak here. Yeah, Bad Bill is a big 10 millimeter guy. This is a cute. I like 42 as well. Yeah, so what's going on? Are you gonna are you gonna shoot the next match in October? Maybe. Might be ready. I'm trying to talk Ray and going up to uh, what is it gonna be the Mexico? Finally. Kind of want to go. You said New Mexico? The uh, competition dynamics. Oh, yeah. one of the TV matches. Yeah. Supposedly, those are the ones to go to. They are nice. Okay, guys. Yeah, so you got the hog. Okay, so what we'll do is this is a tripod. What you need to think about is how the leg is facing. What you don't want are two legs like this i know you can't see the legs but if i, really, I start I pushing forwards it's gonna be the shooter okay so i am the shooter i'm going this way okay. i don't have a leg forwards and i need one because if i push on this at all you see how easy that tilts so just think about a triangle and what we want to do is try to get that leg forwards and re situate this this will be my rifle okay <laughs> you want to try to get it on the balance point okay so hey, you put it in the hog you saddle, you clamp in on it. Hold on, this is a really skinny rifle. <laughs> I'm almost there. Make sure you're not clamping anything that doesn't want to be clamped, especially if you have, you know what, this thing does not accommodate a skinny rifle like this. We'll get it. I we'll actually get can't it. even get it in tight enough. But now I can lean forwards into this, and it's bracing against this forward leg, this red one that you see here. Now, the problem is, is when you're trying to get that angle, you've got to be able to move the screw like this. And then once I get it in, okay, I can lock it in. Once it's locked in, because this is not like the really right stuff that I usually use on an Arca Swiss. I'm trying to show you something that, like if you get a hog saddle or something that's more affordable, how to do it. But this is a key thing. Like at Bushnell, almost everybody has trekking poles. Doing an offhand shot like this at like five, 600 yards is very, very tough. A lot of people, what they'll do is they will either hold the rifle up here or they'll yeah. hold down here. Oh, or There's there. a lot of wobble in it. If you take your tripod, your uh, trekking Walk pole, there. you can actually put it right up under the stock and just regrip it wherever you need to. And it'll make it, I would say, at least 50% more stable. Another so point using something in the rear. Now, I have seen some teams... One guy will carry an ultralight, super dinky 
piece of crap tripod, but it's only for bracing off the rear because it'll be better than a stick. And let's say it's really high, some of those tripods can get higher. So this is a, what they call a hog saddle. They make a couple different versions of these. These have NSN numbers. The U.S. Marine Corps uses these. Uh, like I said, this one is about 300. It's all machined billet aluminum with this texture in here. They make a cheaper version of this that stamps sheet metal. Um, but we just carry it in the bag, and then when you need to mount it, it just goes on if you don't have an Arca Swiss setup. Got it. All righty. So well, that's, that's about all I can contribute to that. So you're running the first leg forward, okay. Yeah, With that way the two, uh, behind you are gonna be, two behind you are going to be spread out so you have room to put. And you want to shoot straight. You don't want to be all angled. You want to basically be – in line with that when you're shooting the shoulders you don't want to be shooting like this yeah go ahead and go back to the normal screen i can't see you guys oops wrong one all right oh. there we go nope there we go. hopefully that was a good piece of advice that was a great piece of advice giving away all the tricks <laughs> i should have gotten a one by four <laughs> rifle <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, the two-by from was probably straight in the grip. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I just grabbed what was over here in the corner, and all I had was a little one-by-two, and that clamp won't go that small. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Bad Billy was talking about the uh, bog. The bog. Yeah, I saw that review. So that was what? Another – how many ounces more was that than the uh, – don't know yeah, I actually asked him a uh, weight on that, comparing it to the really right stuff. Now, the really right stuff, um, that is a $1,500 tripod. Yeah. No doubt about it. Um, it's what you're going to see primarily at the matches would be a really right stuff. And they are solid, and they, they can adjust whatever you need to adjust to. Uh, but at some point, $1,500 and $150, you got to give and take, okay? And that bog wasn't but about half a pound heavier i mean you know half a pound thirteen hundred dollars <laughs> yeah you make it work yeah exactly there we go now we're talking what are we looking at what are you looking at we're looking at a couple tripods three tripods bipods and two I'm trying a new flavor this week. So, well, somebody here. wants to know if you're related to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that guy that does all the testing? That's your cousin, isn't it? The that crazy Russian or whatever. What's that channel called? Who are you talking to? I don't know. I don't even see the question. Put the comment up there. I'm, 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 Who's it from? I don't know. It's earlier up in the feed. It was from Sniper, Conservative Sniper Hunter. Oh, yeah. It's the oh. professional amateur related to AK Opera. Hey, listen. I'm not Russian. Let me put it out there right there. I'm not oh. Russian. Never was. Never will be. I oh. used to speak Russian. I used to be fluent in Russian. Okay? Mm -hmm. Haven't used that language in 20 something years. So you people need to get on the fucking map and figure it out where Slovakia is. Not Slovenia, but I put Slovenia, but Slovenia, or Czechoslovakia, okay? You, I'll just mute him. <laughs> He's gone. Put him in timeout for a minute. Let him this is a family channel. <laughs> All right, so at least we know what Val's uh, button is now. All right, let's see so if he's, he's going to be good. All right. I was just trying to keep you from, you know, saying something. Hey, listen, I was trying to educate people. Well, all you're doing is scaring them, right? Well, that's the same thing. He said, Roger that. What's he's up, right. Isa? <laughs> See, there you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Starting now. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Let the games begin. He saw oh, you guys saw, suck. I told you, you never show your weakness. Oh, you're yeah, you guys need to buy a freaking map. Okay, Google Map is your friend. 
So what's the country north of you, Val? Well, Poland. You, Poland, okay. Yeah. You know how many Polish jokes are there? Lots. None. They're all true. They're all true. <laughs> 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 All right, moving on. Hey, listen, you know why Jesus couldn't be Polish? Oh, no, here we go. No, no. They could. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't find the three wise men and the virgin. <laughs> okay, pal. See what we do here, Matt? Is this fun or what? It's interesting. Mm -hmm. I knew I had a 50-50 shot with Val. I knew it was going to happen sooner or later. That's all right, though. This is Team Trainwreck, and this is what we do. Team it's my new Atlas drone. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the gold on it. That's the – never mind. All right, so what else we got? You guys got any questions? Let me hit this little button here since, you know, I got all these little – things now check this out boom Look at that shazam is that not magic or what oh you know what i got a better one hold on this will be a good one for val let me make it real quick there we go Perfect. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> you read it yet, Mel? I can't see it. Oh, good. Perfect. It says he is from Russia. From Russia. Mokba. <laughs> hey, where's that hat, Ray? It's on his head. Which one? Uh, oh, the one, that, the one from Russia? Mm-hmm. Okay, let me see if I can oh, find yeah, it. Oh, yeah, where's that hat? I've seen you wear that hat. He actually got that hat in Russia, I think. It's a classic. It is classic. All right, so let me get back here to the comments. Who's got some questions here? I have a Trailer Pro question. All right, Tim Davis, hopefully we can help you out. Let us know what it is, and we will try. We will try our best with you. I am hungry, DW says. There it is. All right. Okay, hold on. If it you're gets wearing even hat. better, okay? <laughs> you guys are going to laugh your butts off, okay? All right, let's see it. All right, wait a minute. Here we go. Yep. <laughs> There you go. Hey, uh, Elster Reloading, send me a, send me a, um, <laughs> email on, uh, yeah, but be, be honest. It's really, really freaking cold outside. It's really? the most comfortable head there is. Absolutely, 100%. It beats the beanie head. Wind doesn't blow through it. You, you know, you know what, what, it, what, 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 what it's called? Hey, hey go back to the regular screen, Rick. Do they have the front? Do they have the front fold down so we don't see your ugly mug or what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but how many people have a hat with Putin on there? <laughs> Putin. Is that a collusion? Uh, anyway. That's a good question. Someone had a Streelock Pro question. Streelock. Yeah, we have that one too, but he hasn't answered. Oh, here we go. Yes, he did. I'll get back to you here in a sec, though. Uh, my scope is listed in the program, but not the correct reticle. Will that make a difference? Uh, yeah, when it shows you the thing on there. Uh, I don't use that feature. It's neat to have, but the the drop chart's going to be the most beneficial. I really never really go to that reticle screen. It's kind of nice if you want to see what the... Uh, when what, certain, what certain numbers are. Uh, for steady lines, but if you want if you want that, you can find something that'll match up because most of them are either going to have two tenths hash marks or uh, half half, half, half mil half. or whatever MOA or anything like that. Let me try to send a email here. Snowboarding 
um, the the head that you had, uh, X-ring. Those, yes. those ones we were actually issued in the army. Yeah. Not not the ones with the Putin on, but those those were those were the winter the winter hats. Yeah, because that would make you Russian. <laughs> hey you guys, can you read uh Elsa's uh, email at snowboarding? Is it the number four fun or is it F O R fun? What? Because I got the screen cover because of the email. What are you talking about? The comment snowboarding for fun at Gmail, I think is what it said. Go back in the comments. What's it say? While he's figuring that out, conservative hunter, almost everybody used Remington 700s. That was the one. Every once in a while, I'd see a Seiko. You guys suck. All right. Let me go. What does it say? Doug B says Schmidt and Bender, S and B. Snowboarding four. <laughs> Dude, Derek, pull, you got to pull a Florida bearded fisherman's comment up. Hold on. I'm sending an email. All right, hold on. What does Cinderella and the Slovenian soccer team have in common? They both keep running away from the ball. <laughs> like I said, thank God I'm from Slovakia, not Slovenia. So you guys, jokes on you, because you're a bunch of dumbasses. They can't do that. <laughs> you guys, I just read the comments. The CV Life 69 Bipod. And Domus is asking. Um, <laughs> and by the way, uh, Florida bearded fisherman, it's not nice because we make it fun for the first lady. Okay? And she's the hottest first lady. Oh, yeah. God. Here we go. Get up. <laughs> Slovakia. He's. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> This is just going downhill. I love it. I know. This is going down the drain fast. I like when it does this. This is what makes magic happen. Hey, you oh, know, man. I'm feeling insulted because, you know, somebody can't read the freaking map. You know, somebody needs Atlas, but not a bipod, a real Atlas. <laughs> <laughs> like a real one? <laughs> We got to get Matt's rifle back. Let's get this thing built, buddy. He needs a scope. Why don't you tell everybody what you got that you won't shoot because you don't got a scope for it yet? I just don't want to hurt seen it. When I They've start seen it. They've seen it. It's been featured on the channel many times. I know, but <laughs> we, shoot, we shoot it more than he does. <laughs> Rick, you got to put that one up. What? What do you call? Uh, is that a new one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. He's on, he's searching Slovakian. Uh, he did that to me before. On, uh, <laughs> sniper jokes. It's hilarious. All right. Here, here. He talks this. Here, here. He's telling you guys to pet down. Okay. How many uh, up do we got? Where's TV when I need him? Anybody, Captain Shark? How many? How many? Hey, 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 you know what? I guarantee he's copying and pasting those jokes from somewhere because he's actually using a uh, 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 caps lock correct. So there's no way he's typing that shit. It's copying and pasting it. Hey, <laughs> why, why not? That's the way to do it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, here we go. You use the M lock. Big pot is after that you put a piece of pick rail on the M lock rail and then attach the pot. I actually use pieces um, for M lock on the M lock rail of the pick rail and attach the bipod. But I do not use nylon ones, only metal. That is very important. You will wring one of them off. Yeah. I think spending the extra few bucks are well worth it. Brian Marks, how you doing, buddy? Thanks for showing up. No way. I type that stuff. 
See, he typed that stuff. Where's Coda Boy? I actually sent him a, I actually sent him an invite, and uh, he's not here. He's working on his house. Oh, that's right. I saw him trying to put that shelf thing in. Hey, Ray, tilt your camera down a little. Unless you're doing something I, you don't want us to see. No, I'm just playing with this pod. All right. Hey, long, yeah. long it's it's like no way Gabby's working on his house. 10 o'clock, okay? I guarantee he's going to uh, waste it. Uh, actually, you know, he might be, but I know he's got like 12 guests coming into town. So he is in go-go mode to get that thing finished out. And he's no, really close. no, no, not until 10 o'clock at night. Come on. I, I met KB. There's no freaking way he's working at 10 o'clock at night. Well, he's already drunk right now. What are you talking about? You know, he might be, but I do know that he sent me a picture earlier and his wife was helping him hang shelves. Yeah, I saw I saw that. I did. It doesn't mean he's not having a couple cocktails. Yeah, he's he's a cheap bastard. Why would he let a, a local contractor make a living? No, he's going to do all the shit himself, collect the insurance money. Life is good, buddy. Hey, gun guy. How you doing? Thanks for showing up. Let's see. Uh, most of them were just 700 Ps, uh, the, the PSS model. I'm sure you remember that. Uh, it was just a heavy barreled. Most of the guys would have them sent off, and then the uh, Actions True blueprinted and all that. Uh, that was kind of what was standard back in the day. I found out that today that if I burn my barrel out after I put about three thousand rounds to it, it's going to be a it's going to be gone a while before I get it fixed with a new barrel. I was thinking I could just put one in, but do they make pre-fit for the Tika? Or well, he's still got to be able to get it out. Better buy your action, right? in, a, in a blowtorch will get that bad doggy out. <laughs> <laughs> Been there before. Don't do it. <laughs> that's that's why at that point you just tell the rifle and buy a new one. So, 518M, let's see. I met him at Milton Finn Sports Association. Had a great time. What are you talking about? I sent a thing to Elster. I don't know what happened. Maybe he's trying to download a stupid. Uh, what's the other one? That's a Safari. The other one, uh, Chrome. Hey, Gun Guy says the barrel on the Tika needs to be machined out. Is it hmm. uh, press fit like the old Steyr, the SSGs? That would be interesting to know, Gun Guy, because I do not know. I'm not familiar with Tikas other than I know that they shoot. Yeah, he, he's a smart dude, too. He does a lot of reload. I, he's been on here before. <laughs> Florida bearded fisherman just keeps him coming. <laughs> Tika is going to avoid Rick Morty because of the car on Franco. What sucks is I bought some new stuff, and now I got a pan. Hey, I'm going to call it a night. I got to get up early. Hey, Rick, are, are we going to try to go do any long range tomorrow, or do you know? Uh, I don't know. Probably in the morning, no. I don't know what's going on, so I know. Uh, oh, i got a private thing here. Let me check that real quick. Hey, Bryson. Where's Bryson at? Oh, he's down here. I can't even see his ass. Oh, there's somebody there. There you are. What's up, Mr. Allen? I can't even, I can't even see you. I minutes. You have been? Oh. Yeah, fix my ass. I'm right, you know my phone number, or did you? <laughs> Man, we have a party in here. Let's see if you were smart enough. Nope, you weren't smart enough, Bryce. Hell yeah! Hey, Bryce, have you found the robe yet? No, I haven't, Val. Have you? Yes. Have you what? He asked if I found the rope yet. Oh, I'm painting my bipod bad boy. I'm not paint three of them. I'm gonna paint it off. And I got I got a scope cover I gotta paint too. And hey got, Rick. Uh, yes. He's saying that he thinks it is an interference fit. And if that's the case, yeah, it'll be gone for a little while. <laughs> well not unless you want to take your drill press and drill it out. No uh, Rick, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna blow it, it, my it was a joke. Just dremel it. A gremlin will fix anything. That's right. What's up, Bryson? What's up, Matt? So, Matt, we've been trying to get Matt to start a YouTube channel. Oh, no. 
Get Bartlin. Get your Bartlin head. is the answer. Yeah, I want to. What did you do what? with your teeth, Bartlin? Barrel? Oh, I haven't yeah. done anything with my teeth, but when I when I burn the barrel out, I, so basically I need to get another teeth so I can have rotating ones going back and forth to get barrel. Ooh, six millimeter. I'll make my other one six millimeter. Hey, I'm hopping off. Thank you, Rick, for the chat. This has been quite interesting. <laughs> I was gonna say, don't lie. First one. <laughs> yeah, congratulations yeah. on your first one there. Uh, yeah, just kind of sitting back and listening to everything. So, thank you for having me on. Uh, Val, hope you have a good night and don't take any of the jokes to heart. <laughs> I never do. No, Val's got thick skin. Hell yeah. 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 You can't, you can't, you can't insult me. It takes an intelligent person to insult me. For you guys are safe. <laughs> see? All right. Well, Ray, we might see all y'all tomorrow. So that's right. Thank all y'all for having me. We'll okay. see you. All right. I'll call you. Thanks for showing up. Yeah. Thank all you. Right. Chico says hi, Bryson. Hi. Hola. Or my bridge. Hey, hey, Bryson. I'm right there on your on your tail. I just lost twenty pounds. Awesome, <clears throat> the T3X CTR. I don't know which one that is. It's is it's that, a good one. It's a good one. It's is that more of the hunting rifle style or no? You could call it that, but it's still a heck of a, a rifle. I'm assuming I missed most of the bipod conversation. Yeah, you missed yeah. almost all of it. Yeah, you're you showed up late, my friend, even though you're in the shadows there for 15 minutes. <laughs> you didn't say anything to nobody. No. Honestly, I wish, I wish I could tell you, but when there's somebody below, I'll have to keep track in case Elster shows up. All it is is this little gray thing right on the bottom. You can barely see it. And then I was like, once you texted that in there, I'm like, what is that? <laughs> I we'll see you, it. Joaquin. Joaquin, have a good night. It's a precision rifle. Yeah, I got to try it. Check it out. I did already. Oh, again. So, so I have made a decision. I've got a proof steel barrel coming. Nice. So that'll be good for did, secondary setup. Yeah, I actually meant to talk to you. Uh, the Sniper's Ultimate does not have a caliber restriction on secondary shooter. So I am wondering if we not it might put you on a 6.5 Grendel. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. That hmm. is the only match that I know that there's not a restriction on secondary. Uh, hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd still go, you know, depending on what matches we do, I'd still go ahead and go with that 20 inch proof in uh, 556 or 223, rather. Um, yeah, I was going to say a little late. <laughs> yeah, my six millimeter barrel will be here next week from proof. And so I will. I'm still waiting to hear back from you and your guys, but otherwise, I'm going to be popping rounds out of that next week. Yeah, I just got a quote on that, too. You just got a what? Quote on that stuff for Ray. We're talking okay. about ammo. Nice. Yeah, we'll talk about it later. All right, you guys rock on for a minute. I'm going to go use the head. So, Val, what are you doing for working out? What are you doing to lose weight? You know what? It, it's not as much working out. It, it, it's kind of the, the change of the food and, and the lifestyle. I quit drinking. I only drink on the weekends. I, I uh, basically don't eat. You know, I, I, all, all day, it's just for me, the, the intermittent fasting kind of works better because I rarely eat breakfast. I rarely eat like for lunch. So for me, it works to go out and work all day and I come home at 4 o'clock. Five o'clock, and that's when we're gonna have my first meal. It just somehow I don't miss it, especially when I'm working. Like one thing about me: when I'm working, I'm working. I'm drink, I'm eating, I just work. You know, I'm like a like a big kind of like an idiot. And and uh, when it comes to eating and drinking, then I just stop eating and drinking. So I kind of limit the other thing and kind of combine the whole thing together. So that, that probably was the biggest, biggest thing, kind of big change in my metabolism. So that helped a lot. And I just, you know, I just go to gym. I, I, I hit the weight. I, I, uh, I do a little cardio. 
Hmm. That's an interesting point of view on that. I'm kind of kind of surprised. I, I know some people that were kind of going that way, and I couldn't get myself to do that. Well, you so, have to um, understand, you're also 10 years younger than me. So yeah. Yeah. It's so when I was your age, I was a I was 55 to a month. Now well, going on? Well, like we once, once you get once you get past forty, first, once you get past thirty, your metabolism change. Once you get past forty, it just goes down here. So uh, especially if you kind of uh, lose track of what you're eating and what you're doing, it just yeah. So right now I'm in the gym. I'm all these guys are bench pressing, picking two fifty and whatnot, and I'm struggling with a hundred pound picking dumbbells. So, you know. All right, gentlemen, I got to go. They need to get back on the TV. So, Bryson, good to see you. Val, good to see you. Everyone, I hope you have a great weekend. Have a good one. All right, we'll see you. Talk tomorrow. All right. All right, take care. Yeah, see, I kind of – I had to take a different approach. I have to eat six meals a day, and it's like I could eat a grocery store every day. Um, I eat more than I've ever eaten and I drop weight. I'm dropping, you know, two to three pounds a week at this point, but I'm also running every other day. Like last night was, uh, I think 2.2 miles and that was a short run. Um, and that's with a 19 pound plate carrier plus my battle belt with a Glock and full mags and, uh, two AR mags. You just run yeah, I always, always, hate, always hated running. Running was never like my my forte i always forget it i can be i'll be in the gym for three hours instead of running for 20 minutes <laughs> yeah see i don't i don't mind running as much now um you know especially like getting ready for the bush now um i was really kind of starting to like it and i kind of had to like it to get that match done you kind of have to just you know put your nose to the grindstone you see that bill but See the comment? Oh, that's like it. Echoing. it might be your speakers if you have them up too loud. Like if I'm talking, I'll hear it, but I don't hear anything right now, so I don't know. Well, I haven't changed a thing, so it's it can't be me. My, my sub is exactly the way it was the whole night. All right. The only thing changed is Bryson. I don't think it's coming from me. You know, uh, right now, it's all there's no echo at all. I don't, I don't hear anything, but... Hey. It, it could have been just just before, but yeah, I got I got nothing. <clears throat> it's tough though. It's tough to uh, it's tough to diet and do all that stuff. It's it's definitely a lifestyle change for sure. That's why you know. Well, that's the, yeah. That that's kind of the whole thing. I'm not looking at the at the. I'm not looking at it as a diet because diets never work. I, I've been on diets before, so I'm I'm kind of changing the whole lifestyle, the way I eat and everything. So that that's pretty much what I'm what I'm what I'm doing. You know, I'm not I'm not eating all this fat I used to eat before. I'm you know I'm living on a salad. You know, I'll have a steak once in a while. Lately, I discovered a, a, a turkey steak. That shit's actually cool. I throw it in a, in a pan for like a couple of minutes each side, and then I put it in an air fryer for 15 minutes. Oh, that shit is awesome. You hey, know? Brian, what kind of bipod is this? Uh, looks Apple. like Atlas. <laughs> Guess how much I paid for this. Uh, like fifty bucks, probably, because someone didn't know. No, I paid sixty bucks. You got ripped off. It's a knockoff, though. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say, it looks like it, but there's Look a little. Look it is. It's ridiculous. I ordered one. I ordered a real one yesterday, but it'll take a while to get. I saw this at the gun show, and I'm like, I'm gonna try this. I can just beat the hell out of it. And see huh. it yeah, I have the worn bipod here. That I'm playing with, but yeah, let uh, me see that. I'm gonna click on your screen because most people haven't seen that one. Okay, so this is a worn bipod. Um, you've got adjustments similar to. For, I don't think that. I think the Atlas you have to unscrew, don't you, to get you it to, to do pull the collar down. You have to pull the collar down. Okay, yeah. So this just pulls directly out without any buttons or anything like that. Um, but to get it back in, you have to either ratchet it in or you can actually do this weird like push down and up thing um it's kind of mm -hmm. awkward it doesn't want to do it right now but so you've got that and then i i think the newer models actually have been changed um because there was a slight issue in design 
Um, this was actually one of the first five to come off the machining because I was pro staff for Warren. But right now this has a front 45, 90, and then um, what is it, 125, and then all the way back again. So, What's the price point on that one? Um, they're right up there with the Atlas. I think they're like 400 bucks, somewhere in that range. All right. They're not inexpensive by any means. They're very comparable to the Atlas bipods. Does it have cant and it has, cant. it has um, um, all the stuff that, you know, it's got a little roller ball in there. So if I loosen this up, you can kind of go side to side. You can turn with it, all that stuff. So if you had a moving target, um, you could shoot that. If you had a target, of, you know, just like at the bush now, we were shooting from a really awkward log position. And I literally loosened this thing up before I got up there because I knew it was going to be weird. And my bipod was like this on the log. Um, it was all sideways. So, All right. Yeah, I was showing off. Uh, I got the other camera on here, so I was just showing these off earlier. Yeah, I definitely think if I was to get another bipod, um, I would get the Thunder Beast just because of how quick it is. Um, I don't like the 45 degree weird, like you got to lock it this way and that way. Um, yeah, to get it to the 45? Yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of that because we had a stage um, and it's not Ray cut out that part of the video, but um, you know, I go to get into a position and I needed to lower my rifle so I could actually reach out with this, push my thumb down and rotate it forward. That yeah. You know, a little bit, 25% of the way, and it was easy to do that versus you'd be stuck with the Thunder Beast. You can't get in that position because we didn't know they're blind stages. You don't know what it's going to look like. Yeah, makes sense. Well, and that's the one cool thing about the Atlas that it does have the 45 back in front. Yeah. But I don't know if I'm a big, and I'm grabbing this one because I don't have the real one, but I don't, I don't know if I really like this thing because – if I want, if I don't want can't, where the hell's the camera? If I don't want can't, but I want to be able to do this, you got to have it like in this perfect sweet spot, you know, where it's not too loose. So we'll see, see how the real one does, the real McCoy. Well, yeah, the, ad, the, the figure mash will not have anything. You have to like, pull, you have to push the button and pull it. It's got like a five positions, but they're like really, really fine. Let me turn the camera a different way here so we can all there we go and see Val's head was out of the camera <laughs> the warn is very similar to that in the fact that once you loosen it up it, it can go all willy-nilly on you there's no controlling it there's no halfway point yeah well you know what i can't i can't be shooting all these matches so i gotta spend the money somewhere i'm mostly pistol shooter anyway I just yeah. do this, this long range shit to piss off Ray and you. Hey, I, I enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. It is. It's a ton of fun. It actually yeah. kind of revitalized shooting for me. Three gun was fun, but you know when you do it, it and I'm not trying to you know talk like I'm a, a big person or anything like that, but you know when you do it and you're making money doing it and you have to do it for your sponsors, it's not nearly as fun. Um, you know you're doing it going out there demoing guns for people. And Rick has seen me do it where I, I get people to try, you know, I used to be sponsored by Cobalt. So I'd have people try the rifles. And that's one of those things where I don't really want to do that. You know, I don't really want to take all that time and have all these people shoot rounds through my rifle, but it's part of the job. And then switching to this long range stuff, is just like, it's fun, it's different. And I don't have to upkeep sponsors other than Kenzie's optics, which they're a huge supporter of me. So, well, not to mention you guys, you guys live in a, in a right, right area. You know, you got all these matches and up here, there's nothing like right now. Everything's closed. The, 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 I'm, I'm supposed to go next Friday. My buddy calls me to, uh, to go shoot in a thousand yard range. He's doing like a little, like a friendly competition, like off the books, but it's like Saturday is my daughter's birthday. My mother's coming and whatnot. So I can't really do it. And, and that's the only range in like probably four or five hours around me <laughs> you know that that has a like a semi-decent thousand yard range and it's got all the steel the club i belong to they have a 600 yard range but it's all paper punching they it's all high powered rifle all the bs 
and I've been fighting them for years to put put a put a steel up there. So it's just it's just pain in the ass. I've been coming to to range where you got all these different steels set up, and all you have to do is set your rifle and shoot. You don't have to go down range, set up the paper, then go back, score it because you're stupid. Uh, 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 scope can't see the holes in the page. It's like it's it's it just that shit's a ton of for me. It's a yeah. squire strat. It's just a pretty basic, but the squire baby. Yeah, it's a good starter, but it's a. I think it's a squire silver or gold. I don't know. That was my first like nicer guitar. Um, you got an amp for it? Yeah, the giant amp that's sitting next to it. <laughs> oh, there you go. I had a couple amps, a couple guitars. Um, yeah, no, it, it's it's interesting, you know, and in we're in the right area because there's matches near us. Yeah, but we're not in the right area because there's no, you know, there's VOD, which is a great range, and I appreciate you know those guys letting us come out there and shoot. But it's tough to get out there, um, you know, on a regular basis. So that's the only negative is like, you know, we can have the gear and we can have the matches, but the, the practice and the place to train where you can, you know, shoot off of some of the crazy stuff like we do in matches is not, you, you, there's no way to put yourself in that predicament other than, you know, going to some, you know, place out in the boonies that nobody knows about. Um, it's tough to do that stuff. Yeah, but it's still it's still better than what we have up here. So yeah, yeah I was gonna say it's still ten times better than where yeah. I came from. Quit your, quit your bitching. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're we're pretty lucky here, Bryson. <laughs> yeah, no, I know we're in. We're not in go we're, I mean, all things all things considered, I'm lucky because uh, literally my neighbor behind me has got eighty acres. That's where all my videos, all the shooting. I have my private range set up that. 90% I'm, I'm there by myself and I can shoot up to 200 yards at his place. Then he owns a quarry about 10 minutes north that I can I can probably shoot close to 1,000 yards at his place. Problem is, if I want to do that, I have to call him, I have to go there, I have to set up the targets and whatnot. So it's like a whole chore for a couple of shots, which is pain in the ass. It's just, you know, I want to go out and shoot, you know. So if I convince the guys at the club, I mean, yes, it's only 600, but if I, we convince them to put all different steel, you know what? You can be shooting a, 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 a six-inch piece of steel at 600 yards. You know, that, that's going to translate to shooting freaking uh, close to 1,000 yards. Yeah, it's it, it's tough, but it, it, it's good. It's a fun sport. It's something to learn in. Um, and two, somebody said, uh, let's see, conservative sniper hunter, Stevie Ray Vaughan fan. Absolutely. Um, I was raised on classic rock. Bryson traded his guitar for a rifle. No, not yet. Well, Bryson still needs a guitar because, you know, he's 18 years old. He needs to meet girls. That's right. And the girls don't really like rifles. They like guitars a lot more. Uh, No, some of them like rifles. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but not the hot ones. <laughs> he's, uh, I'm a couple uh, on that one. He knows one that shoots really well. I know quite a few of them, unfortunately. Yeah. Yep. Why can't it right? All right. Snowboarding for fun. That's all spelled correctly at hotmail.com. I don't know what the hell this thing ain't working. Let's try it again. Snowboarding for fun. How many people are watching this freaking disaster? Uh, a bunch snowboarding for fun. How many people are watching this disaster? Is that what you just said? Yeah. <laughs> Enough. Ten times more than you ever get. Oh, shut up. You're leeching off the goddamn X ring. If no, no X ring, you'd be like down to 2,000 subs. So be quiet. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, okay. I had 2,000 subs before you even started YouTube. Yeah, but I freaking, I had more subs than you until you start leeching off X ring. So shut up. No, he doesn't right, even know what we're complaining. Calm down. That's right. He's already in a hot mess already. Pistol Pete's in the house. All right. I sent another email, Elfster. We there should see. Are all three gun shooters. You all are. All the other guys' email worked just fine, so I don't know what's going on. Yes, there is. Actually, here's some of them right here on the new Blue Press magazine. Reloading magazine. 
I don't even know. I might even have a picture of one. All right. Let's see here. I threw that, I threw that in the trash. I, I, I got, I got no need for that. I got all the blue crab I need. Man, I have, I have, I have a loaded pistol. Yeah. There yeah. were a couple of them. There you go. That's uh, you guys won some trophies on that one, didn't you? Yep. Yeah, I have. Uh, actually, believe it or not, um, I had won a trophy at every major match I went to. Um, when I was 17 and eight, yeah, when I was 17 years old, every major match I went to, I came home with a high junior trophy. So even the one on my 18th birthday, I shot two days of a three day match at 17 and I shot the last day on my birthday and I won high junior at that match. And that was like my last two raw. I got my final high junior trophy and I was happy. Was that at Clinton? No, that was actually in Indiana at the, uh, JP PCC multi gun championship. Nice. Uh, I think I finished. Oh, that was a PCC match. Yeah. Wow. Were you were you the only junior? No, there were a ton of. Juniors. <laughs> just I just oh, bought you challenge. Yeah, him and a bunch yeah. of buddies. There, you always see them. Yeah, there's there's Not a lately, but... out there. Um, I am by far the largest junior in the competitive shooting field, though. That was <laughs> that was the big thing. I have been ID'd. Um, I got ID'd at Task Force Dagger two years, <laughs> three years ago. I you're was like, you're not 14. Dagger. I need to see your ID if you're going to take that trophy. Yeah, well, apparently we haven't met my son. <laughs> well, he's, he's not a junior no more, but <laughs> Rick, yeah, Rick met him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's a big boy. Gentle, gentle giant. Yeah. Yeah, nice guy. Got to meet Miss Bald and Curious. And Junior Bald and Curious. So that was cool. Let's see. There's nothing like a nice female reloading ammo in tight shorts. True. Where was that in Indiana? Uh, uh, I, remember. Have, I don't know. 945. We're going to wrap this up here shortly. Bad Billy 429. Have you met Cheyenne Dalton? Yes, I am actually really good friends with Cheyenne Dalton. We text almost on a regular basis, on a daily basis. Wow. I don't know who that is, but cool. <laughs> Has or will Bryson shoot at Camp Perry? I don't believe I've shot at Camp Perry. Um, I don't even know where Camp Perry is. That is... Actually, I don't know for sure. I was going to say South Carolina, but I don't. I don't know. I've shot at Fort I've Benning. You what? I said I've shot at Fort Benning. That's in Georgia, but Georgia. Yeah. I think that's down in Florida. The other one. I Can't like. Hear. I like that answer the best. A girl on an elk hunt sitting horseback is a pretty good sight to see. AKA every girl in Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, conservative sniper hunter. He shoots long distance rabbit hunting in uh, Maples. Uh, what country is that? I can't even think. Right now. Not Australia. Is it Australia? No. UK. Can't remember. It's part of the joke. I'm gonna have to look that up. Bad Billy. Yeah. Cantbury is in northern Ohio. Oh, okay. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, no, I probably won't be there. That's a long ways away. The farthest I've gone was Missouri. That was 14 hours, and uh, I won't do that again. Yes, you will. No, I won't. That you cost fly, me you fly instead? I would fly, yeah. It cost me more in gas and headaches to get there than it did for me to go and shoot a match. Ew. Oh. What the hell did you drive a freaking uh, uh, Humvee? Cost you more than gas. I mean, it cost oh. me. It takes me 13 hours straight driving to get to to get to Pop's place down in in South Carolina, and it cost me maybe I don't know, maybe 200 bucks to get there and back in gas. What are you driving? A Hemi, a truck. Yeah, he drives a truck. Huh? A Dodge. No, not a Dodge, a Ram. Oh, whatever. Isn't it Dodge a Ram? No, yes, Ram. Ram. 
No, no, Dodge Ram. Dodge Ram. Hey, no, the no Dodge Ram. Toolboxes? Val, do you have the built-in toolboxes? You do, right? Yes, I do. How do you like those? They work pretty I well. Love them. Do you put it like an AR in there or something? Oh yeah, you can put a bunch of ARs in there. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I went I went today and uh, borrowed AK from a buddy of mine to uh to uh to put that fixed mag in it, you know, to do a video. Uh -huh. So I, I borrowed one. He's like, Oh, you gotta put it in the in the in the bag. I'm like, look, I opened the the side thing, I stick it in there, shout it, I'm like, done, it's out of sight. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That is cool. Yeah, you can fit a lot of crap in those things. And you don't even lose bed space, do you? No, well, technically you do, but you still have a four by eight, uh, no, four by six and a half left over because it, it, it takes over the space over your fenders. Okay. There you go. That's what I'm driving. What the hell is that? Big jacked up F-150. <laughs> oh, still, I, I don't see how you spend more uh, on the gas than the flight would be. Uh, probably it's probably going to be close to the same. If I get a good price on a flight, be about the same. I don't know because I, I'm I'm thinking about going down to NRA show, and the cheapest tickets I can find uh, flying to freaking Nashville from here are five hundred bucks. I don't know if you want to fly to Nashville right now. There ain't nowhere oh. to stay. Well, I was gonna I was gonna go for the NRA show, but now with the all the freaking coronavirus and bullshit and whatnot. But oh, even, yeah, even that's 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 Bucks for 500 mm -hmm. bucks, then my wife wants to go, so that's a thousand bucks. I'm like, the hell with that, I'm driving. <laughs> Are you gonna drive? I uh, probably won't go at all. Uh, I was gonna say because uh, Nashville got hit hard with a tornado last I don't know how many days ago it was five, four a week ago, yeah, and it messed up the town. I'm sure there's places to stay still, but a lot of people probably lost their homes as well, so they're probably utilizing that as. Are you going to NRA show, Rick? No, of course I. You know I work ten days a month, and my dumb ass is at work. I'm thinking about going. Um, you I've should got... go. I, I would go, but I don't know. I might. I might still go. You know, I might still drive. We'll see what's going to happen. I mean, like, like I had a pretty good day today with the with the house and whatnot. I'm not going to talk about it because I don't want to jinx it. But hell. Today I was a gun salesman. I, this was this. I went to a gun store because I I sold that stupid Desert Eagle. So <laughs> they, they I don't know ship. why you bought that thing, man. I, whatever. So they, <laughs> they, they 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 had to ship it. So I went there and like the gun store I go to, I go there so often. Like I'm like a part right. of the inventory. So I get to go behind the counter. Like if I want to see the rifle, I just go behind the counter and I just pick it up. I check it out. So while I'm behind the counter. You know, this guy comes in, and I'm joking, like, turn around. I was like, may I help you? He goes, yeah, I'm, I'm here to look at the Mossberg 500. I'm like, oh, all right. So, you know, I go, you know what? We don't really have a 500 right here. We have a 590. Like, I start showing you all this, right? right? And, well, long story short, he wound up buying a gun. I showed him. I was like, look, why would you buy a 500? You can get a 590. It's got a more capacity. This one comes with a heat shield. You know, this is what you want, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, holy shit. I'm born for this crap. <laughs> yeah when you saw that when i saw that desert eagle i'm like he ain't gonna have that very long Look like yeah, you long. know what i just i just wanted to have one you this wanted one to be like eagle, eagle. I bought it, but that thing is so uncomfortable if, if this would be like a full-blown version like the one pops has i would keep it but this new york crap it just that thing sucks it's like i bought a uh smith and wesson 500 with a 10 inch barrel and why I bought it at the time, I have no idea, but I bought it and I carried it when we black bear hunted in my backpack is like a, just a cannon to have. Didn't need it. Um, I carried a 44 Magnum, you know, after I kind of put that up and locked it up, but I've still got it. You know, rainy day, we had a buddy of ours who wanted to be a smart Alec and uh, wanted to shoot it one handed and he pulled the trigger twice. Because uh, he didn't expect the single action to go off so quickly, and his muscles tensed up, so he shot it twice, broke his wrist. No, ah, he broke his had, wrist. Yeah, broke his wrist. We had the 700 grain uh, buffalo bore, I think is what it is, and uh, the copper tipped or whatever it is. I don't know. They're crazy strong, and his first shot, he went da -doom! and just snapped. Oh man! 
Yeah, that was never that. That's Ooh. crazy. <laughs> yeah, you get commission on that sale there, Bald? Mana wants to know. No, no, I didn't. But I mean, the guy does all these, all, all the all the crap I sell or I, or I buy online. He does all the transfers for, for free. So, you know, I, I try to get as much business as I can. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely help out. That's true. It's always nice having a one gun store that you just doesn't mind helping you out. And just a heads up, Rick, I've got those parts that you saved me with in the Bushnell match. Um, oh, okay. I got parts to replace them, so I need to get up with you. Yeah, just throw the old ones in; it'll be fine. No, you got the new ones. Whatever, it don't matter. Yeah, this, and I think this, I got the Infinity sold as well. Did you get sick as well when you went to the when you went to Shot Show, Val? Did you get no. the did you get the Shot Show virus? No. Everybody talks about that, just from no. shaking everybody's hand and touching guns and all that stuff. No, the only only Shot Show virus I got is all these guns I want to buy. <laughs> yeah, when's your what do you call it show? What's that thing called? Alien. I, I never, I, I didn't buy it. Oh, uh, I figured for sure you bought that thing. You know what? I'm, I'm still on the fence because supposedly most of the 500 they're bringing in are sold. There's only, only 20, 30 left. But uh, I'm, I'm not on the fence, like you know, because this, this can turn into a second Atlas. So they're not the Atlas, second Hudson. Yeah. So I'm, like, I'm like, I'm like thinking, you no. Know, and this is not thousand dollar gun. This is a five grand. And when I and my biggest problem is if this gun would be at least on a le, on the list for the production guns, so I know it's production legal and carry optic legal, and I can shoot this gun in the competition, I'd be like all over it. But it's not. So it's like you know what? It, it, right now, as it sits, it's overpriced, limited, or open gun. I can I can buy a lot nicer guns for five grand, you know, to shoot to shoot freaking open. That's gonna blow this gun out of the water. The only thing that that you know, it, let's say they do go away, so, so it might have some kind of collector's value down the road and whatnot. So I'm I'm still kind of debating pros and cons whether I should go for it or not. So because you, on the other hand, if they sold them already, uh, all these all these five hundred, the chances are they're gonna bring they're gonna bring them more next year uh, for cheaper. But I also talked to the owner of the company. Uh, I talked to the designer. He, he's the guy on the video. But then I talked to the one of the owners. He's the money guy, and he kind of told me like a backstory and the shit that's going on. And I had a feeling that they, they don't really care about the whole competition market because they're already selling three times as many guns as they can produce. So why would they bring a cheaper version and sell thousand guns at three grand when they can sell freaking uh, five hundred of them for five? <laughs> you know, it just doesn't make sense for them. So they'd rather do that. So it's like I'm I'm on the fence, you know. But that, if they sell those ones, they'll get on production, and then you might get it. You might see well, it on USPSA. Well, technically, they should be on a production list because they meet all the criteria. You you only need uh, to get on a production list. You only have to make more than two thousand uh, uh, pieces, which they already made more than that because they already are on IPSC production list. But it's, somebody has to put it on the list. Somebody has to pursue it. So it's like. Is it gonna happen? It's not gonna happen. Gonna happen. happen you, bro. So I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm on the, I'm on the fence. Look, I, I do, I, I love, I mean, I love the gun. I went to the shot show and I was, this was pretty much top of the list why I went to the shot show, and I was really, really skeptical about this gun because I'm like, okay, it can't be that great and all that, and then I went there and I had the fucking thing in my hand, and that thing feels as good as it looks it just it feels awesome in the hand the triggers ridiculous on that it's all metal gun it's heavy it just it's everything you expect out of the picture so that was like that that just threw me out so hey, now, uh, here's a real I question <laughs> i gotta get out of here y'all i appreciate you having me on rick all right man have a good one thank you uh, good night, good night all right what time all right we got six minutes and we're gonna end see y'all all right take care Good night. Thank you for coming. Holy shit, we, we, we've been yapping for two hours. We've been yapping for two hours. So uh, Red October has a serious question. Those who have high-end guns have the upper hand.
Hey, Red October, he's got a... So the competition is not really a competition. It should be on a scale, not on a gun. Well, Red, you got to look at it as like F1. You know, it's it's about the driver, but it's also about the car. So it's the same It's the same thing. You know, like certain guns will make you a better shooter. Like the Infinity I have, the one I bought of X-Ring, that thing is a tag driver. And I guarantee that that gun will make overage shooter a great shooter. It just when I did a video when I when I compared the the X5 to uh, against the Infinity and I showed how much more accurate that thing is, it just the gun the gun itself is freaking accurate. So I mean you can make all these mistakes, jerking trigger and whatnot, and it'll still shoot a lot better than 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 any other gun. So it's like if you take a Glock and yeah, the Glock will shoot okay, but you have to be a great shot. The Glock in the hands of over the shooter would just be just gonna be over its gun. But, you know, the great gun in the hands of over the shooter, it's going to be a lot better gun. So it's just, it's just the yeah. way it is. I notice when I shoot the Infinity, I know I can shoot a lot farther. You know what I mean? 50, 75-yard shot, I know that if I do everything right, it's going to hit. No problem. And that's with, you know, reloaded ammo that I make. Well, it's the ammo. It's the gun. It's, you know, it's just, you know, and and – it also you you know you know how the gun shoots so so you kind of have more trust like I know with Infinity I was shooting the match and on the indoor range I gotta take at 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 15 yards I gotta take a headshot on the target and I know there's no issues because I know I put that front sight on a, on a head and it's gonna go there because I know that gun is a tag driver with with all my other guns I'm like I'm I'm iffy I don't have that I don't have the trust. Yeah. But right now, right now I'm shooting Kitty Optic, so I'm I'm kind of concentrating on that. Why don't you have them drill that for a freaking optic? Uh, because you can't have a single action Kitty Optic gun. Mm. At least yeah. not yet. I, I I have a feeling they're gonna change that because they changed the they up the the weight. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. They went all the way up to like fifty three of whatever ounces. So there's a good chance they're gonna change that as well, and they might. They might do a, a, a single action carry optics. Here's a good comment by Bad Billy. The Humble Marksman's recent video on the Glock 43X taking sixth place in open division against a bunch of 2011 race guns tells the story. Yeah, so Bad if, Billy. If, he, had, if he was shooting a 2011, he probably would have been in first place. Yeah, it doesn't really tell the story because we don't know. You can, you know, you have to understand one thing. You, you come to competition. And you're gonna have a bunch of people shooting, shooting uh, open guns, 2011s and whatnot. But all these guys uh, uh, are C shooters. Okay, they never, they, they, they're not like a great shooters. They never were. They never will be. They're just shooting optics because they're a bunch of old guys or they're a bunch of rich guys, and they want to show off. So that that doesn't mean a shit. You have to look at it. You know, com com comparing. You have to compare the shooter to a shooter, not not just who shoots what what, what gun. Because I, I went to the match, I shot a steel match in Long Island last year, and I was shooting my Wilson Combat with the open sights, and I was beating all these Asian guys with the with the carry optics and all that, and I was I was like blowing them out of water, you know. And that was the last stage of the of the day that I did under ten seconds, and nobody else did it under twelve. <laughs> so it just it doesn't you know it it doesn't really mean shit to be honest, because it it, it boils down to who were the guys shooting the 2011s here's a good comment by a, a gun guy by the best gun you can afford that's great solid advice right there that's that's actually true yeah the, the most that's important thing buy, is buy, the, buy the more of a gun that you can afford <laughs> just yeah. charge it <laughs> just charge it but it's true and then the second thing is go have fun like oh yeah you what you got go have fun it's all about that. It's all about fun. And it is fun. Everybody there is always – it doesn't matter what competition you're getting. Great and one thing, one thing – I don't know about down by you, but up here, the one thing I noticed at all the competitions, the Asians are tactical. I mean, every match I go to, most of the Asians, they're going to be like all decked out. They have all, all – you know, the, the, the tactical pants, tactical shirts, tactical – Jackets, hats, all the gear and whatnot. Ninety percent of them, <laughs> but they got all this, all this really high-end gear 
all these optics, all the latest crap, holsters and whatnot, but they can't shit for shit. <laughs> all right, you guys. So we're running out of time. We've got 30 seconds here. If you're not familiar with Val, he is uh, bald and curious on YouTube. Go check him out. I think he's left some comments down below. Maybe you can leave another one. Check out his channel. Appreciate everybody showing up, having a good time. And uh, we had a little bit of BS and fun, and we learned maybe something today. So, as always, have fun. And uh, keep shooting. Keep shooting. There you go. That's what he says on his channel. And uh, have a good night. Good night. Yes. On the next one. All right.